Hiros Eke is one of Namibia's official war memorial, inaugurated 19 years ago and located some 10 kilometers south of Venduk. It nestled between Awas, Komas, and Erongo Mountains. At the entrance are statues of two women in a kneeling position with a bunch of flowers as a sign of warmly welcoming all visitors to the skirt side. Inside is a pavilion which can accommodate at a time close to 5,000 people. At the center of this site is the internal flame. In our own African culture, this is the place where you can do rituals. If you are a Christian, you can pray. And um, if you are from Europe, you can light the wreath. This is the heart of the site. The Eka and a heroic medal are among other features there dedicated to those who participated in the country's liberation struggle. There are 174 graves in total with 24 occupied and 9 symbolic graves of the forefathers who fought early resistance. Seven of the graves are repatriated remains of those who died outside Namibia and three are locally repatriated. In the middle of these grounds is a symbolic statue of an unknown soldier. Under the statue of the unknown soldier is the grave of unknown soldiers from Oshatotwa, Zambia and Kasinga, Angola that died during the war without a ceremonial burial. The signature on the stone is of Namibia's founding president, Dr. Sam Nyoma, who officially inaugurated Hiros Eka on 26 August 2002. The sword symbolizes bravery of Namibian people during the Liberation War. Behind is a mural art depicting the journey of Namibia's independence. We started slavery. You can see the people there. And uh, we start resisting using traditional weapons. And our masters, they were having means of, you know, transport horses. They were also having proper rifles. This is during the, the time people went to United Nations, Resolution 345. You can see the world there. And that's the group of people who were in a bush, plain combatants. You can see the men with a book. Those are the people who went to school so that after independence they become leaders of, you know, of the country. If you look there, it's the homestead in the northern Namibia. And during the war, if Swapo crossed the borders to Namibia, the community were protecting them using hoes and they were also using, you know, cattle to, you know, destroy the evidence. You can see the soldiers, the plain combatant fighting there, and uh, they shoot, you know, the aeroplanes. And you can see a group of people coming back from uh, Angola. You see a group of women, children, flowers, same Nyoma with a flag, that's independence of Namibia. The first person to be buried at the site was late NDF chief Dimo Hamambo, who died in September 2002. Soldier, the commander who led the plane combatant during the war. For more than 20 years, he was a, a commander of plane combatants in the bush. Uh, in 26 August 2002, Dimo Hamambo was present here at Hiroseka during the inauguration of Hiroseka. Unfortunately, he died 20 days later. The last person at the moment buried there is veteran politician Dr. Ngariku Tukecheriange, who died in June this year. Gertrude Kandanga Hilukilwa, Putuse Apoles, and Natalia Mavulu are the three female heroines buried at Hiros Eka at this point. A hero can be from any political party, the site manager emphasized. Not only people from Suapo who are here. We have also people from other political parties, like um, late Gelson HV. He's from Swano, but because he contributed to the independence of Namibia, he was also selected as a hero. Nengola is worried that foreigners visit the site more than locals and has urged all Namibians to visit the Hiros Eka as well. Evelyn Polis, NBC News, Hiros Eka.